Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the wineskins, which is found in all of the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's very short as parables go, but there's still a few knots to untangle, so let's take a look. And nobody putteth a piece of raw cloth unto an old garment, for it taketh away the fullness thereof from the garment, and there is made a greater rent. Matthew 9.16 No man soweth a piece of raw cloth to an old garment, otherwise the new piecing taketh away from the old, and there is made a greater rent. Mark 2.21 Patching up clothes with loose or ragged cloth will just make them more likely to get caught on things and tear the clothes open even more. If you have the money, you're better off getting new clothes. To understand what Jesus is saying here, it's important to know the larger context of these verses. The Pharisees and scribes were criticizing Jesus for not fasting like John the Baptist and his followers did. In response, he compares himself to a groom at a wedding, explaining that there was a time for fasting, but a wedding feast, a long, joyous ceremony among the ancient Jews, was not it. He then uses these parables to explain that different behaviors and practices are right for different occasions. Fasting is like mourning, appropriate when you're being kept from something or someone that you dearly long for, but not appropriate when the ultimate good is right in your midst. This also seems to have implications for heaven, that heaven will contain no fasting or mourning, sacrificing in the earth-like sense, because that wouldn't be appropriate for a state in which God is providing perfect happiness for his faithful. Neither do they put new wine into old bottles. Otherwise the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But new wine they put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Matthew nine seventeen. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, otherwise the wine will burst the bottles, and both the wine will be spilled and the bottles will be lost. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Mark 2.22 And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, otherwise the new wine will break the bottles, and it will be spilled, and the bottles will be lost. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Luke 5.37-38 to understand this, it helps to know that while solid bottles did exist in Jesus' time, they were rarely used for wine. Most of the time, wine bottles in first century Jerusalem were large goat skins that were made to carry wine in and shaped in a bottle-like way so that wine or other liquids could be poured out of them. This is why most translations use the term wineskins instead of bottles. Now, during the winemaking process, the natural yeasts derived from the grapes consume the sugars in a process called fermentation, causing a release of carbon dioxide in the wine as it ferments. Now, naturally, the release of any gas inside a liquid appears as bubbles, which expand the total volume contained in the wineskin. Wineskins were generally good at dealing with this increase in size, however, because goatskins can be stretched a bit without breaking. However, once a wineskin has already been stretched by having wine put into it and left to sit, it's a recipe for a disaster to try to reuse the wineskin for more new wine. The skin is already at or near its stretching limit, and if you put more new wine into it, the fermentation process going on in the wine would be too much for the wineskin to endure, and it'll burst from the strain. Of course, old wine, which had already finished fermenting, could be safely put into any wineskin, since it wouldn't stretch the skin any further. This is what Jesus is talking about in this particular parable. The inhabitants of Jerusalem, a winemaking country, would have been well aware of the importance of this rule, and it's therefore very relatable to them, which explains why Matthew brings it up. However, Mark and Luke also bring up this parable because wine was also very commonly made and drunk in Rome and throughout the Roman Empire. It's a type of symbolism that would have united most of the known world at the time, since no beverage was more common than wine. The overall message of this parable, however, is the same as the example of the cloth, that there's a proper time and place for everything, but don't assume a thing that's good to do in one time or place is therefore universally good to do. And no man drinking old hath presently a mind to new, for he saith, The old is better. Luke 5.39 Wines aren't supposed to be drunk while they're still fermenting. You're better off, therefore, with an old wine that's finished its fermentation process rather than one that still hasn't. Here, Jesus is saying that he's bringing something else to the people, 
something that will make them not want to go back to what they'd had before. By becoming the final sacrifice to God and offering himself on the cross to pay the debt for our sins once for all, Jesus removes the need for animal sacrifices, which had been a regular feature throughout Old Testament times. More than that, however, animal sacrifices become inappropriate now that Jesus has died for us, since the only reason to offer them would be if some additional blood sacrifice was needed, which implies a belief that the sacrifice of Jesus was inadequate in some way, and we should never believe anything about Jesus that implies imperfection. So, overall, this parable is steeped in the customs and traditions of the ancient world, but delivers a message that can still be clearly understood today. Next, the strong man. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.